The secret side of me I never let you see I keep it cage, but I can't control it So stay away from me The beast is ugly I feel the rage and I just can't hold it It's scratching on the walls In the closet, in the halls It comes away again, I can't control Welcome back to a new season of Gamecock Football and the Post and Cocky Preview Show. I'm your host Jeremy Sullivan alongside Ryan Mays and we're ready to talk some Gamecock football. After a successful year last year in 2011, expectations are running high for the 2012 season. Yeah, the Gamecocks finished off last year with a win over Nebraska in the Capital One Bowl and are looking to build on those record-setting 11 wins in 2011. South Carolina has been ranked as the ninth best team in the country in both the AP and USA Today coaches polls and are considered by many analysts to be a legitimate threat to win the SEC and contend for a national championship. With a healthy Marcus Lattimore, a more experienced Connor Shaw at quarterback, and several defensive standouts returning, there's a lot to look forward to for this team. Coach Spurrier seems confident about his squad for the upcoming year and has both his players and the fan base excited for the upcoming season. It certainly is a highly anticipated season, but it's always tough to win consistently in a conference like the SEC. Yeah, it is, but I do think the Gamecocks have a chance to do something really special this year. They open up with a Thursday night contest against division rival Vanderbilt before facing two non-conference opponents at home, ECU and UAB. Then they open a set of seven consecutive conference tests, including a brutal stretch in October, where they face Georgia, then go on the road to LSU and Florida in three straight weeks. This stretch of games will make or break Carolina's season. They close at home with a contest against Wofford and then finish the season at rival Clemson on November 24th. If everything goes well for South Carolina this year, they could be looking at a 10, 11, or even 12 win regular season and be playing in Atlanta for the SEC Championship on December 1st. Now, every year, teams have the tough challenge of bringing in top-level recruits. Who do you think for the Gamecocks this year is going to come in and make an immediate impact? Well, they have a lot of freshmen coming in that could start right away and make that impact. Jordan Diggs and Chaz Elder in the secondary. Mike Davis at running back, and Brandon Shell on the offensive line. But if I had to narrow it down to one guy, it would be wide receiver Shaq Rowland. It's a great day for me. It um, shows all my hard work. You know, um, I give thanks to all my family and friends. The Gamecocks lost one of their best offensive players over the past three seasons in Alshon Jeffrey, who went second round in the NFL draft to the Chicago Bears. Ace Sanders, Bruce Ellington, Demir Bird, and D.L. Moore all return at wide receiver but there are still several question marks still left to answer. Shaq Rowland can come in and earn some early playing time. I think that a 6-1 frame gives him the size to make an impact right away, similar to what Jeffrey did as a freshman at USC. Look for Rowland to be a key player early on in South Carolina's passing attack. Now Rowland could get his first action as early as week one as the Gamecocks travel to Vanderbilt, where the Commodores had some success last season. Yeah, they went 5-2 and two at home last year, including a 3-point loss to Arkansas and a 5-point loss to Georgia. South Carolina only had four true road games last year in which they went 3-1, and one, winning close games at Georgia by 3, Mississippi State by 2, and then handling Tennessee by 11. They also lost by 16 to Arkansas in November. Quarterback Jordan Rogers is going to be the guy under center for Vanderbilt this year after splitting time with Larry Smith last season. He threw for over 1,500 yards and nine touchdowns with 10 interceptions last year. With limited weapons at wide receiver, it could be difficult for Rodgers to have a breakthrough season as a senior. Vanderbilt will rely on their running attack to control the clock against the Gamecocks. Running back Zach Stacy is coming off a record-setting season and will lead a deep group of running backs for the Commodores this year. Vanderbilt also returns nine starters on defense, which will add much-needed experience in a difficult SEC schedule. There's no doubt that Vanderbilt's on the rise in the SEC and are a legitimate threat to upset South Carolina in a season opener. What do you think is going to be the key matchup for South Carolina as they face their first road test? Well, I think the big key for South Carolina is going to be their defensive front against Vanderbilt's rushing attack. Senior running back Zach Stacy rushed for a Vanderbilt record 1,193 yards on over 200 carries last season. Only Alabama's Trent Richardson and Auburn's Mike Dyer had more carries than Stacy last year. Vanderbilt wants to take some of the load off of Stacy and returning backup Jaron Seymour, the expected return of Warren Norman from injury, and the addition of freshman Brian Kimbrough could give offensive coordinator John Donovan the needed depth to help Stacy. 
South Carolina has one of the most solid defensive lines in the conference, if not the country, and will be difficult to run against this year. Sophomores Jadavion Clowney and Kelsey Quarles return to help senior Devin Taylor up front and bolster a defense that allowed only 4 yards per play last year and 267 yards per game. Look for this matchup to be a big factor in who wins and loses this important conference opener. Now that you've given us good insight on the first game of the season, who do you like to start off 1-0? Well, it's going to be a very tough environment for the Gamecocks to open the season, but I do think that they'll have some success against Vanderbilt's secondary, and the running game will be successful late in the game to kill the clock. If Vandy can't find success on the ground, it could be difficult for them to score points and have a chance to win this game. I like South Carolina winning a competitive ball game 28-20. That'll just about do it for the Post and Cocky Preview Show. But before we leave, we'd like you to check out our brand new website at thepostandcocky.com. And as always, you can find us on Twitter and Facebook. And we'll catch you next week as we preview South Carolina's home opener against East Carolina.